Once again, SpaceX just made another historic milestone with their second Starship flight test, but it still ended in an explosion minutes after launch. Before obtaining launch permission, a seven-month bureaucratic battle over the environmental impact of the rocket considered factors such as endangered birds, historical monuments, exhaust, and construction noise. Now, due to this explosion, the FAA has continued to ground the Starship ship super heavy launch system while the results of the mishap investigation are being evaluated. So what will the FAA report and when can SpaceX launch the next Starship? Let's learn more about this development in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX launched its second Starship rocket flight on Saturday, pushing the development of the mammoth-like vehicle past new milestones. Liftoff came a few minutes after 8 a.m. ET from its Starbase facility facility near Boca Chica, Texas. Starship flew for more than seven minutes, successfully separating from its booster before the rocket's onboard system intentionally destroyed the vehicle mid-flight. Luckily, nobody was on board during the test flight. We have lost the data from the second stage. What we do believe right now is that the automated flight termination system on the second stage appears to have triggered very late in the burn, John Innsbrucker, SpaceX principal integration engineer, said on the company's webcast. The flight termination system is a standard safety feature in rockets, as it destroys the vehicle if a problem arises or it flies off course. On SpaceX's webcast, Starship appears to have been detonated at an altitude of about 148 kilometers or about 485,000 feet. That is a little under half the altitude at which the International Space Station orbits the Earth. After reaching space, Starship was planned to fly most of the way around the Earth before re-entering the atmosphere and splashing down off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. Ship 25 and Booster 9 exploded at the end, like Ship 24 and Booster 7, but the FAA seemed to feel more satisfied with this result than before. This information is preliminary and subject to change. A mishap occurred during the SpaceX Starship OFT-2 launch from Boca Chica, Texas on Saturday, November 18th. The anomaly resulted in a loss of the vehicle. No injuries or public property damage have been reported, the agency announced on X.com. No injuries is considered a huge success, but more importantly, this time around, SpaceX's state Stage zero completely satisfied the FAA. As we can see, for this particular test launch, there weren't any rock tornadoes. The orbital launch mount is looking a lot better, and all things around the pad are in good shape. This is, in great part, thanks to SpaceX's water deluge system. However, because the flight still ended in an explosion, the FAA will stop Starship to investigate before allowing the next flight. Hopefully, with what SpaceX has just shown today, this delay will not take too long. Clearing the FAA's hurdle will require SpaceX to take a deep dive into the telemetry that streamed down from the Starship during its brief flight. It may come as a surprise to SpaceX enthusiasts, but the agency has been fairly accommodating to the company, considering its often destructive launches. The Starship program has experienced delays due to the time required to obtain permissions from the FAA. However, the stipulations imposed on the company regarding hardware modifications and environmental safeguards have been relatively moderate. Since the last explosive test flight, the FAA has been collecting data to authorize the most recent launch. In compliance with the Endangered Species Act, the agency worked in conjunction with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to approve any alterations to the rocket and launch pad. The focal point of concern in this launch was the introduction of a new water deluge system, capable of dispersing up to 350,000 gallons of water during Starship's liftoff, with the majority transforming into billowing steam. This water serves to cool a recently installed steel blast plate designed by SpaceX to protect its launch pad, which suffered significant damage during Starship's initial test flight. Pressure on the FWS came from more than just Musk's X account. NASA 
Administrator Bill Nelson a week before today's launch told the Washington Post that it is essential to us that SpaceX be able to test their rocket. U.S. Representatives Tony Gonzalez and Vicente Gonzalez, a Democrat and Republican, both from South Texas, wrote a public letter to the FWS asking for quick approval. The United States is currently in a space race with the rest of the world, they wrote. The federal government should not hinder public companies as they develop and push the United States to remain a leader in the space exploration realm. This Wednesday, the FWS and FAA announced that the new water deluge system was covered by an existing launch license filed in 2022. There are no significant environmental changes, the FAA said, allowing today's launch to proceed. Despite the rocket's substantial size and instances of flaming debris reaching public wildlife preserves, permissive rulings have become almost routine. Jim Chapman, president of the local group Friends of the Wildlife Corridor, has accused the FAA of essentially aligning with SpaceX, a sentiment echoed by others. Chapman's group, alongside the Sierra Club and others, filed a lawsuit against the state of Texas seeking to halt Starship testing, alleging violations of the state constitution in granting exceptions for the company's launch site on Boca Chica Beach. The lawsuit was proved to be unsuccessful in September, removing one of the few barriers to Starship's testing ambitions in that location. Musk has prevailed in the courts, put regulators on their pace, and dominated the commercial launch industry. But physics holds the final say over the success of Starship. I think they do have a good shot of pulling it off. Casey Dreyer, a space policy analyst and the director of the Planetary Society, says of the rocket. But it still has to be proven. There is no leveraging, cajoling, or finessing the calculations of thrust, the pressure inside the cryogenic tanks, or the behavior of a 165-foot-long spaceship attempting a rocket-powered landing. Perhaps, understand that is Starship's importance to humanity. The success of SpaceX's latest rocket holds immense significance, especially concerning NASA's timeline for sending astronauts back to the moon's surface. Starship has been selected by the space agency as the lunar lander for the Artemis III mission, slated to transport astronauts to the moon in late 2025 or early 2026. However, before this mission takes place, Starship must undergo a series of certification flights. While certification for crew carrying is still a significant milestone on the horizon, the success achieved today certainly sets Starship on the right trajectory. When Elon Musk initially introduced the Starship concept, he referred to it as the Mars Colonial Transporter. During the elaboration of the system at the International Astronautical Congress in September of 2016, he revealed a new name, the Interplanetary Transport System. These earlier designations reflect the spacecraft's primary purpose purpose of facilitating humanity's expansion into an interplanetary species, a long-standing aspiration of Musk's. Despite the shifting timelines, Musk envisions Starship as the vehicle that will enable the establishment of a sustainable and permanent human presence beyond Earth. The key breakthrough that could realize this vision is Starship's reusability. This new system represents the next evolutionary step beyond SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which already employs reused boosters. However, the Falcon 9's reusability is limited to the first stage and payload fairings, with a turnaround time of a few weeks. In contrast, Starship's design emphasizes full reusability, potentially revolutionizing space travel and allowing for a more efficient and sustainable exploration of our solar system. In fact, the rocket's launch tower features two massive chopstick arms, designed to catch Super Heavy as it returns to the launch pad for landing, and also to stack a landing Starship back onto Super Heavy for reflight. Starship's launch today was hoped to lead to an uptick in launch cadence for new vehicles as further refined designs make their way to the launch pad in Boca Chica. Currently, the Starship's test iterations don't include any of the cabin or life support components needed to carry a payload or sustain a crew, but SpaceX is betting big on the rocket's success. However, SpaceX will have to investigate the causes of the Starship failure and develop a new way to keep the Super Heavy from exploding after hot staging. Infrastructure to support Starship launches from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida has been underway for the past couple of years, and SpaceX plans to utilize their facilities at the Space Center once Starship is flying regularly. A Starship launch tower has been built at SpaceX's Launch Complex 39A, or L-7, 
LC-39A for short, at the KSC, and a crew access arm added to the tower at LC-41 to support Falcon 9 crew launches from multiple pads once Starship launches move to the Cape. Looking ahead, SpaceX is contemplating the possibility of conducting Starship test flights on a monthly basis. If this frequency is sustained, it could significantly contribute to the certification of the spacecraft for crewed launches in preparation for Artemis 3. SpaceX's track record with the Falcon 9, which has been launching more than once a week on average for the past few years, underscores the company's commitment to achieving a higher cadence for its new launch vehicle. Throughout the various stages of Starship's development, Elon Musk has consistently highlighted the spacecraft's potential for rapid reusability. His vision encompasses a scenario where the same Starship vehicles launch, land, and relaunch, and relaunch multiple times within a single day, ultimately leading to the prospect of hundreds of Starship launches every week. This ambitious goal aligns with SpaceX's long-standing objective of pushing the boundaries of spaceflight capabilities. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.